Physical modelling is vitally important to the, the civil engineering industry, uh, particularly on the hydraulic side for what we do at HR Wallingford. We're taking designs and we're testing those at a small scale to make sure they work before they're built in the real world. And that can be anything from hydraulic structures, so pumping stations for cooling water or desalination plants, the coastal side of things, so harbours, breakwaters, revetments, things like that. Within that, we cover a, a whole range of different aspects from the stability of those structures to how they perform from a technical perspective in terms of the armour stability or the forces that act on them or for the hydraulic structures to flow through them and making sure that that's as smooth as possible and you've not got lots of turbulence that's going to impact the performance of the pumps. When we're approached to do a physical modelling study, we start off on uh, the coastal side with a blank basin and they are anywhere between 30 by 30 metres to 30 by 70 metres and they start as completely empty. Uh, we then build a representation of the seabed and that is trying to capture any features that would change the waves and that's what's being built in the basin behind me at the moment. We start with templates, wooden templates, and we put a compacted sand ballast in, and then we have a thin cap of concrete on the top, and that gives us then a platform to work on uh, for the rest of our modelling. Once we've got the bathymetry, we bring the wave makers in, and we check we get the right wave conditions in the right places in our models. Those wave conditions could come from real world data or from large area numerical modelling. Once we've got those wave conditions, we can then go in and build our scale model structures. We'll build the different layers within the structures, just like they have in prototype, and we'll try and mimic the placement methods that are used out in the real world. So we'll bulk place the core material, then we'll come in and place the underlayers, and when we get to the primary armour on the outside, whether that's armour units or rock, those will be individually hand placed. So we are effectively the crane coming along and putting those individual units or rocks in place. On a large coastal physical model, we're talking tons of scaled rock and that is all prepared specially to match the grading of prototype materials. So smaller material we sieve and get the right grade for armour rock, we individually weigh those rocks <laughs> to make sure we get the right mix of sizes and weights. We can be 10 plus tonnes for the, the core and that's at model scale um, in terms of what we're bringing into the basin. So here we've got the, this is the 1000 air condition, uh, is what we call a short crested sea. This is a hurricane sea, winds going in all directions, which are whipping up individual waves and making them grow, and that's what we see here. Whilst you see all the different movements of the paddle back here, they are actually sending out individual small groups of waves. All this is programmed internally. So there are HR Wallingford wave makers, it's HR Wallingford software, and once we've specified the sea condition, we calculate the whole storm, and each of those panels are now pre-programmed to generate the short crested sea for the whole of that six hour simulation of the actual hurricane storm. Physical modelling work requires a lot of expertise from right across our company and is um, very specialist to the, the, the work that we do. And that comes right through from the engineering side through to the construction staff that are building the woodwork and building our bathymetries. All of them need to know what they're doing and be able to work to the accuracy that we need for the, the scaled environment that we're in. So it's, it's quite different from a normal construction site for say a housing project or something like that where if you're a few millimetres out most of the time that doesn't matter. For a, a big 3D model we might be as small as 1 to 60 scale so one millimetre in our model is 60 millimetres in the real world and that obviously goes up one metre in the model is 60 metres in the real world. When we fill the basins with water to run testing we have 
plus or minus one millimetre accuracy on the water level in the basin. At HL Wallingford, we're really well placed with both the numerical and the physical modelling. We have 70 plus years of physical modelling data that we can use to validate our numerical models, but we can also use our numerical models to feed in to our physical models in terms of wave conditions, or when we've done a physical model and then the client changes their design and they want to test a small part of that, we can then go and do that numerically without having to rebuild a costly physical model. Physical modelling is here to stay, certainly through the rest of my career and probably quite a long way into the future.